We are 24 hours away from the NHL season kicking off for your Colorado Avalanche. You'll hear every game from the Golden Pipes and Fetish Free Connor McGahee right here <laughs> on Altitude 92.5 starting tomorrow night. Joining us on the hotline right now, he is Kale McCarr from your Colorado Avalanche. Kale, it's Josh Dover and Ryan Harris. Scotty just had to leave us. How you doing today, man? Not too bad. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, we appreciate you making time for us, Kale. Um, we'll jump right in here, man. And before we talk too much about the season, tell us a little bit about the uh, off season. I'll use quotes around Kale. Fifty six games, kind of strange. What'd you do during the off season? How'd you get some ice time? And how you feeling health wise coming in? Yeah, feeling really good. Obviously, it was a little bit of a different off season, but um, I mean, I, I think uh, everybody's really excited to get it going. But no, for me, it was just basically. There's a lot of just individual work this off season, obviously, because everything was shut down. So um, got out in the outdoor rinks a little bit at the end near Christmas when everything got fully shut down. But, no, it was a lot of fun and definitely excited to be back with the group. And I know we're all excited to get it rolling. And, Kale, back with the group. You're no longer the youngest player now. <laughs> uh, I, I remember the things that the vets had me do in the NFL that I wanted to bring to my younger players. What's what, what's one thing that the vets made you do uh, when you were the, the youngest player on the roster and that's something that you think you're going to make uh, the young players now do for you? Uh, that's a good question. Honestly, <laughs> uh, nothing really comes to mind um, other than just kind of little chores around here and there, but, um, no, everybody's everybody's awesome on our team, and everybody's treated equally, so it's awesome. Talking to Kale McCarr, your Colorado Avalanche. Now, Kale, uh, I'll ask you a question. I'm sure you're going to get it a lot, and I hope I'm not you know, going over the top already here with it, but the expectations, man, and you're a young man that's had a lot of expectations, I'm sure, for yourself, but with your skill set, with all the teams that you've been on, now dealing it with the Avalanche as a Stanley Cup favorite. Uh, is, is it something that's talked about? You just leave it alone and go out and perform? How, how do you guys deal with it as a team and then for you individually? I mean, yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Obviously, our goal is we want to be one of the, the team um, longest-running teams this season and then to be able to play for the Cup. So um, it, it's going to be an interesting year. Obviously, a lot of different teams um, are going to be capable of getting all the way there, and it's going to be a fun one, but... I think for us, it's going to be that underlying meaning where if you show up to the rink a little bit tired, you know what our goal is, and um, you kind of just pull through. So I'm really excited to see how our season starts here. And um, it could, there, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and I think for us, it's just going to be able to manage that and um, try and remain consistent throughout the whole season. What's been different for you this year already in practice, You know, playing alongside Taves, as we saw that you two are the number one defensive pairing? What's different uh, playing with a veteran like that for you? Yeah, I mean, we haven't had too much work together just because obviously it's um, pretty quick practice here and stuff in those scrimmages. But, no, you can just tell he moves the puck very well and um, he thinks the game fast. So it's always fun to play like play with guys like that. And um, I'm excited to see what we can do in a game scenario. I, I think for us it's just going to be able to be reliable on both ends of the ice and make sure that um, in order to create offense we're taking care of our D zone first. Kale, I always thought that less practice meant more intense practice. Is it a good thing you guys are doing kind of shorter practices in these scrimmages, you think? I think so, yeah. Honestly, I think um, guys came here ready, and you could tell there was a cha championship atmosphere just in the room right, right from day one. And um, like I said, I think guys are really excited, and uh, you, we don't need a long training camp to, to get it going. And um, I think guys are in a good spot right now, and we're feeling confident as a team to start the season tomorrow. Kale, now I want to I want to – preface the question here by telling you we've had your dad on the show we've had awesome dude yeah we've had gary on the show so we're basically family so you can tell us the truth here is what i'm oh, getting come at. on <laughs> kale mccarr versus nathan mckinnon on the ice who wins the race so that's uh i'd probably say nate um he's, he's got a pretty quick first <laughs> three steps i think that's why he's one of the most elite in the league um obviously he's so explosive so I don't think anybody can beat that guy's first three steps. Well, being close to Gary as we are, I know, I know the McCarr family wouldn't trip him on the way out or something. You get the win, Kale. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, hey, Kale, one of the other things, too, we're talking to Kale McCarr of your Colorado Avalanche. Uh, you, we had uh, Coach Bednar talk about Grubauer being 100% healthy, really the whole roster, he said. What's that do for you to have a healthy Grubauer back there? Bednar saying he expects to give him 60 to 65% of the starts. Yeah, obviously it's awesome um, just to have guys that we can rely on every night like that. And um, Like I said, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, hopefully not too many injuries, knock on wood, but at the end of the day we ran into a lot of those scenarios last year and we had to overcome them. So 
Um, it's just going to, like, we have a team that has a lot of great depth, so it's just going to be a testament to that if, and, um, if that ever happens. We are talking to Kale McCarr. A few more minutes with you, Kale, and appreciate the time. You guys have uh, the Lake Tahoe game coming up here in, what, just now over a month now, and a lot of Avalanche fans fired up to see it, and everybody loves the outdoor game. Sure, you skated uh, plenty on an outdoor rink, as you told us you have in the off season. but how much are you looking forward to that? A little Lake Tahoe action for you guys against the Golden Knights on February 20th. Yeah, it's going to be, it's, I think it's going to come up pretty quick in our schedule here, but I'm um, no, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a very cool experience. Obviously, um, tough, probably not with uh, many fans or no fans at all there. So I've never been there before, but I've, I know the scenery well, and it's, uh, it looks pretty spectacular. So um, the boys are pretty fired up when they heard um, we'd have this thrown into our schedule. Let me ask you another one about some fans I know are fired up about, and it's, they look freaking sweet. So yeah, I even saw the, uh, the mask rocking it a little bit at skate yesterday, but how about the throwback of the the Nordique sweaters this year, Kale? You gotta love that uh, seeing seeing that Nordique logo on the sweater you'll get to wear. Yeah, um, I I love it. I think they did a really good job incorporating the, the Avalanche colors into the the history of the Nordiques, and um, I I think a lot of guys are pretty excited to wear that. Um, just to even have the maroon gear on the other day was pretty cool. So uh, I think it's undoubtedly the the best retro jersey that they put out. So um, yeah, hopefully we can wear them a few times this year. Talking to Kale McCarr, Calder Trophy winner last year. Maybe a Norris Trophy coming up for him. And Kale, uh, you're great at hockey. Congratulations in case you didn't know. But uh, <laughs> you and I share another passion, which is golf. What was the? Uh, were you able to get out this off season? And and what's your handicap at now? What were you working on for your golf yeah. game, my friend? Yeah, I love uh, love getting out on the course as much as I can. And um, obviously, it was a little bit different year, so most of our summer was taken up. But um, being kicked out early, um, I was able to actually get out on the course just a little bit up in Canada, not not for too many weeks because obviously it gets a little bit cold up there. But yeah. um, no, just just to kind of get uh, a few swings and get back in the group. I, I'd probably say my handicap's about a probably a, a nine or ten right now. So no, nothing, nothing too crazy. We got quite a few guys on our team that are um, pretty pretty close to scratch. So yeah. So are you? Uh, more work needs to be done then to get you to that scratch. Is that going to be in the short game? Uh, you know, chipping with the wedge, or is that more putting, or or is your driver, you know, being a bit fickle on you? Yeah, I think it's uh, my my driver. I think um, I got the the hands and the touch for the putting in the in the short game, but um, the driver can be a little inconsistent. But uh, when I when I'm able to corral it, it's um. Uh, it's a fun game to play. <laughs> oh, it's the best feeling. When you crush a drive and it actually goes straight, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sometimes I walk off the course, man. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you again. You know, you, you come back COVID times, all the things that, that we've had to go through as a society and then you guys certainly as athletes. Anybody have, like, you know, Landy got crazy hair or a, a kind of a weird beard going on in the locker room? Who came back looking the strangest? Um, well, I mean, just coming back, I, obviously you haven't seen the boys in a while, but um, definitely uh, Calvert. Calvi, uh, <laughs> he has some long hair growing, going on right now. and I don't know, same with uh, Gravy Graves. Um, see, they both have pretty long hair, and uh, it was a little bit different to see, especially Calvi with long hair. So I'm interested to see how long he keeps it, but you guys will definitely be seeing the flow tomorrow, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, last thing for me, Kale, uh, we heard there was a little bit of – Back and forth, some players, when the game was announced on Lake Tahoe, thought the game was going to be on the lake. Is that true? I mean, when I first heard that, I was I was kind of like, I don't know how they could. I didn't know the weather was cold enough to even do it on the lake up there if it froze. So, um, yeah, I was a little bit skeptical. So, But uh, I think they were doing it on the golf course or just on the land near the lake. So I think that probably makes a lot more sense, and I think guys – um, related to that quite a bit more, obviously. <laughs> it's that uh, 18th hole right there, Kale. So go go get a dub over the Golden Knights and just go change and get a yeah. nice round in before you head back, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Kale, it's been great. Oh, you know what? I lied. One more here. Um, if you got one sentence to describe Mark Mosier, could you give it to us? <laughs> uh, just a very awesome unique individual <laughs> oh you're there too you kind go. but we, we know what unique nice, means Kale. we know what unique means <laughs> we know what you mean by unique because we do <laughs> it every day <laughs> thanks Kale. Kale, it's been great man uh, best of luck with everything hope you the family uh everybody you love is safe through through the times we're going through and hope you can continue to dominate the way you do on the rink man hopefully appreciate you guys having me on again thanks for